everyone. My name is Aryan Parvesh Rizzi, and I was honored to be part of the TAN Lab this summer. Um, my main focus for this presentation is going to be the evaluation of cell segmentation strategies for brain tumors. In this presentation, I will be focusing on the principles of epigenetically driven gliomas, the codex technique, and mesmer. To understand the principles of epigenetically driven gliomas, it's important to understand gliomas as a whole. Gliomas are the most common primary brain malignancies that remain incurable to this day, unfortunately. Between 50 to 75% of diffused low-grade gliomas become grade four tumors with a life expectancy of less than five years and a survival rate of less than 20% in the pediatric population. Gliomas in general harbor specific mutations, and at its broadest levels, gliomas can be characterized by their heterogeneity, with some tumors primarily being influenced by epigenetic alterations, such as IDH and histone mutations, while others are non-epigenetic tumors, such as IDH wild type mutations. Epigenetically driven tumors are defined by their remarkable transcriptional programs, their distinct microenvironment, their unique cellular neighborhoods and cell-to-cell -cell interaction. The mutations in gliomas often lead to immune evasive phenotypes, which is when cancer cells can develop mechanisms to evade the immune system surveillance and continue growing and proliferating and spreading throughout the body. The exact molecular mechanism that leads to these point mutations remains unclear, and that's what we try to study at the TAN lab. I just want to put this um, schematic in this presentation to briefly go over and highlight the complexity of the glioma tumor microenvironment. In summary, this figure represents how complex the microenvironment of the glioma tumor is as it interacts with vasculature, macrophages, lymphocytes, non-neoplastic brain tumor cells, intratumoral communications, and one thing that's very unique is the synaptic integration with neurons in the tumor microenvironment of gliomas. So the hypothesis, we hypothesize at the TAN lab that the subtypes of gliomas have shared epigenetic transcriptional characteristics, which leads to the immune evasion by interacting with the tumor's immune microenvironment. And the aims of the project we're currently focused on is to establish connection between the epigenetic changes and trans transcriptional regulation by employing single cell multiomic profiling and the second aim is to use codex and other imaging techniques such as MRFISH, specifically codex spatial proteomics, to directly study patterns of cellular localization and communication in glioma samples, which is what I focused on this summer. So briefly about the codex technique. So the codex technique stands for code detection by indexing. It is a cutting edge imaging technology, which is used for multiplex tissue analysis. It enables the detection of dozens of biomarkers in a tissue sample at a subcellular resolution. Codex employs three different reagents, um, barcodes, antibodies, and reporters. Antibodies primarily target specific biomarkers of interest, such as cell surface proteins or intracellular markers. Reporters are secondary antibodies, which are conjugated with the oligonucleotide barcodes, and when they're excited with a light source, they fluoresce, and that's how the image is created. And the barcodes are attached to the secondary antibodies to create an index for each biomarker to later be detected. So the workflow of codex involves staining, imaging, and analyzing. In the staining phase, a tissue sample is stained with antibodies. Later, there are cycles, and in each cycle, three reporters are added to reveal three cell markers at a time. These reporters basically bind to complementary barcodes and are then excited with a light source. They fluoresce, and that's when the software images the tissue with three markers. After each cycle, the reporters are removed and the cycle repeats until all the markers on the panel are revealed and imaged in the tissue. When it comes to analysis, after the image is created, we have a pre-processed image, which later has to be processed and has to go through multiple steps for further analysis. 
So the common steps in image analysis in general involves pre-processing, which is when we process the images. The next step would be cell segmentation, where we segment the cells, and later on downstream analysis, protein quantification, cell phenotyping, and lastly, statistics spatial analysis to understand the cellular neighborhood, the interactions, and the environment and higher order functional units of the tumor microenvironment. So more about cell segmentation. Cell segmentation basically bridges the gap between the spatial organization and molecular profiles in single cell spatial multiomics. When performing cell segmentation, the goal is to identify and delineate individual cells within an image or to sequence or sequences of an image. And it's a crucial step in just many biological and medical applications, in this case, cancer research. So why is cell segmentation so important? Cell segmentation allows us to generate a spatial map of gene expression or protein levels. So it's very critical in providing insights into how cellular functions are orchestrated within the tissue microenvironment. In addition, um, cell segmentation allows us with segmenting and distinguishing different cell populations based on their molecular signatures and spatial distributions. And this is crucial for characterizing cellular heterogeneity in complex tissues. So it helps with cell type identification. Cell segmentation also provides spatial locations of individual cells within the tissue sample, which reveals tissue heterogeneity and cell to cell interaction. So it gives us insight as to the spatial context of the tumor microenvironment. And lastly, with biomarker discovery, accurate cell segmentation helps us with identifying unique molecular markers that are associated with specific cell populations or spatial regions. And this is essential for potential diagnostic and therapeutic applications, which is the eventual goal of many of these projects. So some challenges involved with cell segmentation are just the complex structures of cells. Cells in general can exhibit really complex morphological features, such as irregular shapes, branching, overlapping, which makes them challenging to identify um, and segment accurately. The next issue is variability in image quality. When images are produced, no matter what technique is used, there could be image quality issues that lead to challenges with cell segmentation. These issues usually rise from contrast, lighting, and noise levels. Another issue is the large, um, the large data that we're working with. So the high throughput analysis requires automated segmentation, especially when you're working with millions and millions of cells, which is what we do at the TAN lab. What causes even more challenges is when we're trying to segment glioma cells and some of the features and characteristics of glioma cells which cause these challenges are infiltrative growth, which causes the tumor cells to extend beyond visible tumor boundaries. The complex morphology and the microtumor environment of gliomas also lead to challenges with cell segmentation. The ambiguous tumor border, which causes an indistinct border between the normal brain tissue and healthy brain tissue also causes issues with segmentation. And the signal to noise ratio due to codec specifically could also cause issues with accurate cell segmentation. So what I worked on this summer was understanding the applications of Mesmer, which is a deep learning um, model in cell segmentation. Uh, Mesmer is a deep learning algorithm from the Deep Cell Library, and it performs both nuclear and whole cell segmentation. It has two channels. One is the nuclear image, and the other one is the cytoplasm and membrane image. The nuclear image defines the nucleus of each cell, and the membrane and the cytoplasm channel defines the shape of each cell. So once a tissue sample is gathered, the two channels are identified, again, being the nuclear channel and the membrane channel. The images are then normalized. They run through a pre-trained deep learning model. The model predicts the center and the shape of each cell and then performs segmentation. For the purposes of this presentation, I'll be presenting a pediatric high-grade glioma autopsy slide that was imaged at the TAN lab. I'll be representing three regions from this slide. So 
What I basically focused on was testing three different parameters that Mesmer offers, being maxima threshold, interior threshold, and pixel expansion, to see how accurately it performs cell segmentation on the slides we have at the TAN lab. For pixel expansion, I tested five different values of one, two, three, four, and five. The rate is 0.5 microns per pixel. So with cell segmentation, not only do we want to capture nuclei, but we also want to capture enough cytoplasm and organelles or membranes um, to basically be able to understand the environment of the cell and each cell individually. A pixel expansion of a lower value, such as one, captures the nucleus, but does not necessarily capture enough membrane for downstream analysis. As the value of the pixel expansion is increased, it captures more of the membrane and cytoplasm. However, it causes this spider-shaped segmentation, which could cause issues in downstream analysis. The second parameter that I tested was maxima threshold. This parameter controls the model um, and considers what is a unique cell. A lower value results in a more separate cell being predicted versus a higher value results in fewer cells being predicted. I tested three different values of 0 0.3, 0 0.5, and 0 0.8, and I wanted to point out specific parts of the image. A higher value results in more clusters of cells and less cells in general being detected in the sample, whereas as the values decrease, the nuclei are identified more accurately. And looking at the raw data, it can be seen how the cells are clustered in this region at higher values. They're considered one segment. However, as we decrease the value of maxima th threshold, it performs more accurate segmentation with nuclei. The next value or parameter is the interior threshold, which basically controls how conservative the model is in estimating what is a cell versus a background. Lower values of interior threshold result in larger cells and smaller values result in smaller cells. So again, this is detecting what is a cell versus a background. At higher values, there are rarely any segmentation, it means it doesn't detect the cells from the background. As the values decrease, there is more conservative segmentation. The next sample is still populated with cells. However, the background and the cells were what I, what, what was I wanted to test um, with the different parameters. So with the pixel expansion, again, a lower value results in just nuclei being captured. And as the value is increased, more of the cytoplasm and environment of each cell is captured. Maxima threshold being cell separation. Again, with that specific cluster, there isn't enough segmentation. As the values decrease, it performs more segmentation and cell separation. The interior threshold is how conservative the model is at detecting what is a cell versus a background. At higher values, there is rarely any um, detection. And as the values decrease, there is more detection. Same with the third sample with pixel expansion. As the value is increased, more cytoplasm is captured. And with the interior threshold value, again, the lower the value, the more cells are separated. Interior threshold, more conservative detection. So the outcomes of my work after discussing it with my PI and collaborators was that the fine-tuned parameters we want to test on the clusters are a pixel expansion of three, maximum threshold of 0.3, interior threshold of 0.3, and we will be updating the pipeline with these values. My current work at the TAN lab um, involves running this updated pipeline on the cluster, quantifying expression levels, and clustering and visualizing samples of pediatric glioma's. I wanted to thank all of TAN Lab for giving me this wonderful opportunity this summer. I have learned so much in terms of computational biology and systems biology, and everybody's so wonderful, including my mentor, Jonathan Sussman, and my PI, Dr. Kai Tan. I would also like you, I would also like to invite you to connect with me on LinkedIn. And please feel free to ask any questions regarding my presentation.